Hello, welcome to Yellow Door Urban Homestead. I am Asia and I'm an urban gardener growing in a small space in my backyard. And tonight, I am putting compost on my light green <laughs> plants. Um, so I said in my last video that I had some... I am not done yet. <laughs> my neighbor's kid. Wait, what are you doing? Uh, huh? <laughs> it's gonna start talking as soon as I start talking. Anywho, I have some light green peppers that's in the actual garden beds, um, and I'm gonna put some black cow compost on them. This is what it looks like. I'm just gonna top dress them. I'm going to put a layer of this compost on the soil. When it rains, hopefully, not hopefully, it will happen. The rain will take the nutrients from the compost down into the roots of these peppers. And hopefully, within the next few days, we will see some progress in these peppers. I'm also gonna do it to uh, my squash and my cucumbers and anything else that kinda looks, you know, light green. I'm gonna put it on the tomatoes that's on the trellis behind the orchard area because they're very skinny. Pretty sure they could be a little bit thicker. <laughs> so it is the next day and we're at Lowe's because I feel like I need more compost. Um, I'm just gonna give everything kind of a good feeding. And so I'm back at Lowe's to get more compost. Good morning. So we are back in the garden today. We're still laying compost, which will not be a large part of this video because the first two minutes of this video was me laying compost. But I figured that it would make sense for me just to kind of give everything a little bit of a boost, especially since I'm growing in such a small space. Um, and I have a lot of things in my garden beds and, you know, all out here. So I figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and give things a boost. And so I grabbed five more bags of uh, black cow. So we're gonna go ahead and lay that today. But the other thing we're gonna do today is go ahead and cut out the second plants. Uh, we talked about that in my last video. Um, we're gonna pick the strongest one and leave that and take the other one. It's always hard to cut out a plant. Like you do not want to cut out a plant because it's like that could be food. But if you don't, in some cases, they can fight for nutrients in the soil. Um, and it's better to have one really good plant than two mediocre plants. So we're gonna pull out our second plants um, wherever they are throughout the garden. So that's like the watermelon, the cantaloupe, the cucumbers, we can go ahead and take out the second plant. We're also going to transplant the zinnias. You know, I had those four zinnias that grew because I forgot that I had planted them. And clearly I didn't water them and things because I didn't know they were back there. <laughs> <laughs> so they got watered. I didn't water them on purpose, I would say, uh, because I didn't know they were back there. So clearly the water that I gave the garden was enough. And so I do have four zinnia plants. So we're going to separate them and plant them out in the garden today. Um, also, oh, we got to tie up the tomatoes again. So I'm really trying to get prepared so that when it rains, my garden can benefit from the rain. It's a very good idea 
um, like if you need to transplant, if you're gonna lay a top dressing on your garden to do it like right before it rains. Mother Nature will take care of getting your seedlings acclimated with its own water. Um, it'll take care of getting the nutrients down into the soil for you. Now, I would not recommend that you fertilize with like a water soluble fertilizer before it rains because it can basically just kind of drain it out of the soil. So you don't want to do that because you have runoff and things like that. But right after a rain, it would be a great time to go ahead and fertilize if you need to because the ground is already wet and of course fertilizer goes into your roots when the soil is wet so I, I do think that that's a good time to do it so let's go ahead and top dress that and then I'm going to tell you about those boots you saw a few minutes ago Okay, so let's take a little bit of a break from the work of the garden, the hard work, but the rewarding work of the garden to talk about the boots that you saw earlier in the video. So hi C sent me those boots. Um, hi C is a company that I have been working with for quite some time and I love their products. Um, they sent me rain boots this time when a perfect time because it is supposed to rain all weekend and so when I come out to the garden I can put on my rain boots. These boots have a 100 year warranty on them. They also have a 100 percent stay warm stay dry product um, and so I feel like the rain boots fit me very well I feel like the boots move with me when I kneel down the boots move too uh, it's not a stiff boot I absolutely love them it's a very flexible boot and so I am loving their products for sure um, when they came out of the packaging which I forgot to show you all they were packaged very well um, I believe they were in their own plastic bag um, so very nice packaging very nice products very nice boots um, and so hi C is a company that does um, outdoor wear so they have rain boots they have snow boots they have hiking boots they have fishing boots they have all the boots you would need um, and they're a very good product I had shown my very first pair of these boots in a video a while back and you can't tell that they you know are my very first pair maybe a year old I'm not really sure but if I were to wipe them off and clean them up you would not know that they are that old their product is a very good product made well I, I do believe will last for for a very long time for me so I'm very happy um, that they sent me these boots so there is a link in the description below and you can get 15% off um, if you use my code which is also in the description below so go ahead over there and take a little look because I don't think that you would be disappointed by these boots I really don't so I completely forgot to say <laughs> <laughs> that the link is good until June 19th and so um, it is coming from Amazon they are selling on Amazon so if you are interested make sure you check before June 19th because the link will no longer be good after that well the discount on the link will no longer be good after that <laughs> thank you Hasi for sponsoring this video but let's go ahead and get to work y'all <laughs> So we are going to start with moving the zinnias. Um, so there are four zinnias, one, well two there and two over there behind the pepper plants. I do want to leave two in this bed, so I'm going to have to dig both of them up, um, all four of them up, separate them, plant one back over here, and then we're going to plant the other ones. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, you know what? We'll put the other two that came up over here over in the flower bed. There are more. If you remember, we planted some just randomly in the garden for direct sowing and I was going to separate them. So let me show you. They are coming up. Finally, 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 they are coming up. I really need to get out here and pin down the weed barrier. I started, ran out of pins, forgot to go get more. I just came from Lowe's y'all and I still forgot those pins um, because that that's not a good look. Okay, so see, these are all the zinnias that we planted out. You know, we put a bunch of seeds in a hole and I'm gonna separate them once they come up and grow a little bit, but they are finally growing. What I don't see is any of my sunflowers 
The sunflowers are not working with me this year. Although, y'all remember the sunflower that we transplanted together? I was out here doing something, found a sunflower and I transplanted it. Do y'all remember that? You wanna see it? I'm gonna show you anyway. <laughs> That's it. That is that sunflower that we transplanted. Looking amazing. And I planted it beside the trellis because sunflowers get super tall. And so I can tie this to this trellis. So pretty excited to see that coming up like that. Considering I did not take care of my last set of starts and all of my sunflowers was in that group of starts. So any sunflowers I could get is a good thing because my direct sewing doesn't seem to be working. Um, and it's cool though. You know, I think it's still going to be a nice mix of things out here. I found two more, I think, in the compost pile. Not sure if I planted them with you all or not, but so those are coming up too. Doing really well. I have gotten totally off track, but I also want to show y'all <laughs> the tomato. So I'm going to try to show this tomato in every video if I remember so that you can see the progression of a tomato sucker without it being rooted. So I'm going to show you that really quick. So that's the tomato sucker. You remember my last video? This leaf was looking crazy, like it was gonna fall off. Top is still growing and it is looking much stronger. So that is the second viewing of the tomato sucker. I put another one in over here. It looks bad. <laughs> we will follow that one as well throughout the season. That's my little just play around bed at this point because it didn't want to produce anything for me early in the season, you know, when I was planting things out. So that's gonna be my little play around bed. I'm gonna just kind of throw stuff in it. Y'all, look at that borage. I'm gonna have to cut that down. It's a volunteer borage that is taking over my little Vigo garden bed. And there are other things in that bed. <laughs> there are peppers in that bed. There's a uh, squash in that bed. So I'm gonna have to cut it down, but it's beautiful, isn't it? I do love borage. So. I am gonna get back on track. Y'all hang in there with me. Ooh, I gotta show y'all the compost pile too. Anyway, that's a borage flower. Tastes very much like a cucumber. Um, I would eat this on camera with you all, but I have to get this furry part off. The furry part, furry part is not delicious. <laughs> Oh, compost pile, compost pile, really quick. We're getting back to work after this. Promise, promise, promise. All right, so compost pile has heated up, y'all. My last video, we turned this, and I said I thought in a few days I may be at 150. So I turned the compost pile on Wednesday. It is Saturday. And we were at 80 degrees when we finished turning it and putting the thermometer back in it. So today we are at... 120, a little over 120. So we are active and we will be headed to hot, I hope, <laughs> in the next few um, days. It's gonna rain. I kinda feel like I should cover it because I don't know how much rain we're gonna get. I'm probably gonna cover the compost pile with some plastic. I'm just gonna throw some plastic over it until after the rain passes because it is wet enough and I do not want it to get too wet because that could cause problems for your compost pile. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get these out of here really quick. I'm going to just show you, I'm not doing anything special. It's just like if you were transplanting out of a sale. Just going to pull it out. I'm going to dig down. Can't have, their roots can't be too deep, I don't think. But I'm going to dig down, get them out of here really quick. This soil is not very moist. Although that kind of works for, it kind of works for uh, the peppers. Because peppers don't like wet feet. Let's see, might be a little deeper than I thought they were. There we go. So we're just gonna separate them. Just like that. Pull them apart. And we're gonna put this one back where it came from. <laughs> just like that. Then we're gonna move this one over into the flower bed. I'm gonna plant it right here. So zinnias get really tall. Um, these are the moms, not gonna, I don't know that they're gonna go all the way through summer anyway, but I do know they're perennial, they'll come back. So we're gonna go ahead and drop that on in there too. And I am gonna water around that a little bit right now, even though it's gonna rain, because the soil that it came out of was pretty darn dry. <laughs> Thank you. 
watering in your starts or your transplants making sure that you water it well will help to get any of the air out of the soil and it'll help the soil to like settle around the roots which will help your plant to uh, get acclimated and to kind of transplant better so if you're gonna transplant make sure you water them in unless your soil is like really moist already you're definitely going to want to water it in <laughs> and if your soil is super dry um, when you plant it like you may want to water it go do something else come back and water it again just to make sure that you've watered deeply um, because dry soil water moves through it and so it doesn't actually moisturize the soil originally like when you first do it it may run through it so you may have to come back and water again just stick your finger down beside it and see if it's moist <laughs> okay it is now time to do the thing that we most gardeners don't like to do that is to cut out that second plant. So you'll see me when I direct sow, um, or even when I start seeds inside, I put two seeds into one sale. I do that to make sure that I have at least one germinate, but I don't let them both grow. Um, and in most cases, I'll separate them eventually and put them into their own sale so they can grow on, on their own. But if I don't, or if, like these, I purchase them from a store um, and I don't want to separate their roots, then I have to cut them. So in the case of this squash, I'm going to choose the squash. I think this is zucchini, actually. I'm not really sure what it is. Either way, <laughs> y'all know. Y'all know what I mean. In the case of these two plants, I'm going to pick the strongest looking one and I'm going to cut it. So let's see if I can get you closer. So in this case, this plant stem looks a lot stronger than this one this one here much stronger than this one it's what it looks like so i'm gonna make the decision to go ahead and clip this one so that's that there's one down y'all oh no <laughs> And so that's going to leave a lot more space and nutrients for this one uh, plant. time to tie up these tomatoes still looking amazing <laughs> this is gonna take some time I'm definitely gonna have to put you in time lapse um, because I did a few of them this week already but I ran out of string and so I grabbed some string yesterday from Home Depot it is Vigoro I guess Vigoro that's the string I use it seems to be working fine um, I see on other channels that they use like a brown color string or a tan color string it may be a little bit stronger this is what I'm able to get and it's working on these tomatoes and so that's what I'm about to do <laughs> so if you are new here um, this year instead of using bamboo stakes I decided to do the Florida weave trellising and I'm actually loving it the bamboo stakes by the end of the year not even the end of the year like middle of the year the stakes start to kind of well they buckle under the pressure of having tomatoes on them um, especially in the bags I think they would have been fine if I was able to kind of drive them down into the ground but I'm growing in bags and so I found that using t-post and taking string across it and keeping the tomatoes to one liter although I do have some two liters because I didn't pay attention <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's supporting them well um, they look good they're standing straight up I'm very happy with this choice I've said that in my last few videos but that lets you know just how happy I am with my choice <laughs> I'm not gonna be the dead horse on that though hopefully that'll be the last time y'all hear me say that but it probably won't be <laughs> So 
so all of the tomatoes are tied up like i said i had done some already so i didn't have to do them all today just uh these four rows the rest of the tomatoes i had tied up i guess it was wasn't yesterday it might have been thursday i tied them up so we're done tying up tomatoes last thing i need to do in preparation for the rain is take care of the chickens um they don't prefer their feet to be wet and since i know it's gonna rain i'm gonna go ahead and put some wood chips down um, i'm also gonna try and level it out a little bit because they scratch so much and when you put the fresh wood chips down when they scratch they throw them into areas where they should not be and then you have a mound of wood chips in one place and then the rest of it is not covered so we're gonna go ahead and straighten that up and then i'm gonna be done for the day and me and my daughter have massages to go to today. If you watch my vlog, you know when she was out on spring break, we were supposed to get massages. Couldn't get in there. We were supposed to go again and something happened. I don't know. This is the second reschedule, but we're going to make it today. Um, so that's why I wanted to get this video done so early. What is going on here? <laughs> Every time I look at my tomatoes, sometimes I'm like, did I miss a string? Oh, the string broke. I see it now. There's one missing. Or I just skipped one. I don't know it, it doesn't matter they're still standing up see this gap right here i don't know if i missed one or oh no i didn't miss one i'm assuming the tomatoes at the other end were taller and so when these started to grow in um this one is very loose that might that might be our problem right there this one is very loose but it's it, and it's not a problem i say problem just because it doesn't look well put together but it's not a problem it's still holding the tomatoes up so we're not gonna worry about that i did what i could <laughs> all right let's get to this chicken area and then let's go in the house <laughs> So when we put the new chicken coop in, went ahead and put chicken. Now that she's done interrupting we went ahead and put chicken netting chicken we went ahead and put chicken netting under both of the coops so that if anything was trying to dig like the possum that i had um, it wouldn't be able to actually get into the coop and for sure for the quail that was a big thing um, because the chickens can go inside of you know the actual coop they don't in most cases um, unless we put them in there but we did that um, as a predator protection because when I first got chickens, I had no problems with predators, like none. And then out of nowhere, that possum showed up. So essentially what they did was when they kicked this, like she's doing right now, they kicked it over there and somehow it went under the netting. See how it's doing? Well, not somehow. It makes perfect sense now how we got under the netting. The netting was not buried, I guess, um, under this. So they kicked it it fell through and then we ended up with the netting on the top well yeah the chicken netting on the top and a big mound in front of the quail coop so i'm gonna get that out and i'm gonna spread it back out and then i'm gonna put some fresh chips over top of that so that um you know when they come out here tomorrow um in the rain or tonight actually i think it's supposed to rain when they come out here tonight um when it's raining their feet won't be well, this evening because they go to bed at night y'all forgive me i'm tired at this point i've been working all morning um their feet won't be wet so that's what we're gonna do <laughs> Alright, 
the mountain is gone. Now, we just need to put some wood chips in here. She tried to escape, y'all. Oh, they all tried to escape when I opened the door. Okay, so, done with the chicken area. I take that back. We have one more thing we need to take care of. They roost here. Whoever sits there poops on the ladder to go up, so. I just use this little stick and I push the poop off as often as I can and kind of move it around because it's going to compost in place in here because I also put wood chips inside of their coop. It's pretty dry in here right now. There's no smell. So right now I'm not going to do that, but I normally do. one may be going broody I'm not sure I feel like she's been in here almost all morning I haven't really seen her that's Betty what no that's Bertha Bertha actually that's Betty ah. she may be broody y'all are you broody eh, maybe maybe not I don't know she's been in here though Oh, yeah, I think she's putting eggs under her. That's no bueno. <laughs> Get away! I feel like we do this in every video. I think you just want attention. <laughs> this, this will be my first broody chicken if she is going broody. We'll see this evening when I try to get eggs. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to visit me over on Instagram where I post about the things going on in the garden almost every day. Bye y'all.